In this video, I'm gonna give you my 10 best tips for success on eBay, and they're gonna come from my own personal experiences. I've been a full-time reseller for the last 18 months selling on eBay, and I sat back and thought to myself, what would be the 10 best bits of advice that I could give to anybody that was selling on eBay? So whether you're a beginner, a part-timer, a full-time seller, it doesn't matter. Hopefully these tips are gonna have some value for you. So I will quickly say the last tip, tip number 10, is definitely by far the best of the bunch, so stick around for that. But we'll dive into the first tip, which is setting real realistic expectations and goals. Now, before we get started going out to thrift stores and buying items to sell online, we need to ask ourselves two very, very important questions. The first one is how much time are we gonna be allocating to this business? And the second one is how much money do we hope to make from it? For me, it was to work full time, a 40 hour work week to make $1,000 in profit. For you, it might be to work five hours a week to generate 100 bucks that pays for a holiday at the end of the year. These answers are gonna be different for absolutely everybody, but I think it's imperative that you write them down to give yourself a bit of guidance as to what you're trying to achieve. Now, from those answers, you're also going to be able to establish a listing goal as well. And if I put some numbers up here for you, I listed 10 items a day for the entirety of last year, and that generated me $95,000 in revenue. And I had an average sale price, which was pretty typical there of about $40 and a 65% sell-through rate. But that's pretty much the averages of eBay. You've just got to be making sure that you're listing that certain set number every single day. That's truly the secret. So for me, it was 10. For you, with five hours at 100 bucks a week, it might be two or three items. But work out what those answers are, put them on paper, and then get going with your listing goal. So we all fall into the trap of getting very excited about going out to the thrift store and, and buying as many items as we possibly can, but that can actually also be not a great thing to be doing. I think for tip number two, you actually wanna kinda of try and limit the stock that you're purchasing, especially in the beginning stages of your reselling journey. I think a really good tool or a really good gauge to work off is whatever that listing goal is that you set for yourself, try and source those amount of items on a weekly basis. If it's five a day that you're doing, try and buy 35 items a week. Cash flow is very, very important in this business. The last thing you wanna be doing is leaving a pile of money hiding in the corner because you're not listing your items up and you're buying excessively. So a couple of things, you won't be overwhelmed if you do it that way. If you just buy what you need, you list it up. And then also too, you won't feel stressed with the allocation of time you've given yourself to focus on all the other duties that are required with this eBay business. You need a lot of time for administration, you need a lot of time for doing your postage, and you also need a lot of time for your listing. So there's gonna be some other elements, not just your sourcing, try and limit that to what you're gonna do just in that very week. A really good tip when you are outsourcing for your items though would be to utilize two apps on your mobile phone. And they're the only two apps that I use when it comes to reselling. And the first one is the eBay app itself. It makes the most sense, but there is a filtered sold search element to the app that allows you to see any item that you might have interest in purchasing. You can see how much it's sold for over the last 90 days before you even go ahead and buy the item. So there's a barcode scan element to the app and you can also type in any details you may know about the item to try and match it on eBay to see how much it sells for. The other one as well is Google Lens. Google Lens has, uh, Lens has been a really good tool for me over the last few months. Uh, basically any item or TV show, movie character that I might not know about, maybe I've got an action figure or a plush toy and I don't know who it is, you can take a photo on Google Lens and it will bring up all the Google details for that exact match. And you can even often find it straight away on what it sells for on eBay through Google Lens. So an incredibly useful tool for anything you might not know about, and all you have to do is take a quick photo. So I've always made sure I've had those two apps on my phone when I'm outsourcing, and they've always come in very handy. So this next tip, I really kind of wish I did sooner. It was probably about six months into selling on eBay before I actually went ahead and made the investment of buying the box lights that you can see here. And these box lights have been a massive game changer for me. They've made my listings 10 times better the minute I turned them on and started to use them. I actually used to use natural sunlight for my listings and I actually shiver when I think about the fact that that's how I was trying to do them previously because these lights have completely changed everything. I can now list at night time as well, which has been a huge plus for time management. But apart from that, it's just a good camera, a trestle table, some white background, and that is all I need for a really powerful listing station that's been able to generate a number of sales for me over the last 18 months. So I really highly encourage you guys, tip number four, just focus on your lighting system. If you're gonna invest any money into this business, I think the first thing you should do is to get yourself a really good set of lights, and I can't recommend the ones that I've got here more. So links in the description, go and check them out and have a think about it because it really might change the game for you. 
Don't underestimate the importance of an inventory tracking spreadsheet. For tip number five, make sure that you've got this put in place right at the very beginning of your journey. You wanna know what you're buying your items for, what they're ending up to sell for, what the sell through rate is, and how much profit you're making after fees and postage. So that pretty much just the columns that you need to be putting in there. They don't need to be a big fancy document. You just need to have a document. That's the biggest tip that I've got for you. You just need a bit of an understanding of what you're buying the items for, what items you've still got sitting unsold, and then for the ones that have sold, how quickly did they sell? That information is crucial. And then also how much profit are you generating from those items? And then those two little pieces of information can help you when you go out into the thrift next and buy more items. So just create some form of a spreadsheet. It doesn't need to be too fancy. Now, when it comes to eBay specifically, there's a few things that I do on the platform that allows me to generate faster sales. And the first one is that I actually promote every single one of my listings at 2%. And if you don't know what promoted listings refers to, it's basically putting your listing ahead of somebody else's that might not have a promoted listing. And it gives you a chance to get a few more people to see your items and to then obviously go ahead and commit to the purchase of your items, which is what it's all about. So for me, I like to do it at 2%, not more than that. It works out to about 15% overall. You start off at about 13% in fees, you promote at 2%, you end up paying 15% overall. So I don't think it's too nasty, but it's had a dramatic effect on my sales. If I have a look at the numbers, 75% of my uh, page views and impressions were generated by the promoted listings part of it. The 50% of my sales were promoted listings. And I think that was, that was actually quite a large number. I didn't think it would be that big. So half of my sales were promoted. So a really crucial step there, even at just 2% can have a dramatic effect on the overall sales. The next tip is to allow for best offers, accept best offers and send out best offers. This is crucial guys, 50% yet again of my sales in the last calendar year came from best offers. Now, 30% of those best offers were accepted and 20% of the best offers were me sending out an offer. And I'm really quick to the gun with this. I've got it allocated as a best offer for every single one of my listings. You can always offer an amount and I'll determine whether or not I accept it or not. I won't obviously accept all of the low ball ones, but generally anything within about five to 10% of my initial listing price, I'm gonna accept that every single day of the week. Remember we speak about cash flow quite heavily you want to be making sure you're getting sales back. And a lot of the ways to do that is to offer, accept, and send best offers. So 50% of my overall sales, if I didn't have it activated, I would have made a whole lot less last year. The next tip would be to offer a one day shipping and handling time. And you might be saying, Matt, I don't have time to be doing shipping every second day of the week, and that's fine. Maybe you started out at two or three days worth of shipping and handling, and you improve your processes to get yourself down to being a one day shipping and handling. The reason why I say that is that eBay likes best customer service practices for their sellers and offset their buyers to receive. So a great way to show great customer service is to ship the item as quickly as you possibly can. So if you you can get your items to one day worth of shipping and handling, it will promote your listings up higher in the algorithm and you will get a better chance of having your items sell. So good customer service, always recommended, a great way of doing that, put the one day listing on and try and work yourself down to it if you can't do it initially. Next one, tip number nine, would be to make sure that you've got your international postage set up as well. About 5% of my sales, which doesn't sound like a lot, it still all counts though, was sent internationally in 2021. So if I didn't have international postage on, that's 5% of the sales that I wouldn't have been able to get. So I definitely think it's not as scary as what a lot of people make it out to be. People hear horror stories and it really puts them off doing international postage, but I couldn't recommend it more. It is actually very simple to do, very easy to transact at Australia Post and very easy to set up on your your eBay page. So I'll link a video description below um, for my video that I have for international postage to hopefully help you set that up if you haven't yet done so yet. And tip number 10, the one that I said at the beginning of the episode would be the biggest and most important to your success on eBay. Buy items that actually sell. And it's not as easy as you might think. It's really quite difficult to hone in on items that you know are gonna be consistent sellers on your eBay page. And if you can work out a few items that really do sell on a consistent basis, you're off to the races. You're gonna have a very successful store. So I always put out videos on this YouTube channel about the items that I buy, the items that I go on to sell. I've had a 65% sell through rate this year. So I think any of my sourcing videos are certainly gonna be a wealth of information for you. But I will say that 34% of the sales that I had in 2021 for that 95,000 
14% was DVDs, 20% was the shoe category. So they could be two really good categories for you to focus on. If you're a beginner reseller, they've certainly been a big money maker for me and they are consistently selling on eBay. I will leave you with this video right here, which is my 10 best ways to source items to sell on eBay. If you don't have the thrift stores to constantly rely on, there are so many other different ways to find items to sell. And that video right there will give you nine other very good options. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one, guys. Remember to subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out videos all throughout the year regarding how to sell on eBay. And uh, remember to give the video a like as well. It's very much appreciated. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you soon.